Hello and welcome back everyone, we are of course back, and today as you can see, we're back on Hypixel Skyblock once again, and today I'm going to be showing you five of my favorite, and also in my opinion, the best money making methods for when you're just starting out in Hypixel Skyblock. Now, these are supposed to be used right about the point of where we left off last episode, or even at the start of last episode, or not episode, but last video, about how to get started in this game, so it's for when you're just starting out, so don't worry, these will generally still be helpful into the mid game, but, you know, they're not going to be making enough to be worth it in the late game, so if you're in the late game for some reason and watching this, I definitely suggest going over to one of my other videos that might be a bit more helpful, but, you know, if you're in the late game already, I don't think you need my beginner guides. So, without further ado, let's get started, and let's go make some money. Now this first method I actually talked about in my last video, it's the simplest, er earliest into the game money making method that you can possibly do. You're going to want to go to the farm merchant once you have some money, and you're going to want to buy a rookie hoe, and then you are basically going to just want to go over here and grind out farming with all the wheat that spawns in spawn. You can hop around spawn lobbies if you need to, but generally if you can find a kind of uh, low population lobby, you'll be able to harvest a ton of wheat and just continue going all around and selling this, you know, making it into enchanted seeds or wheat, and you will be set for very easy money. But because of how easy it is, it is of course not very much money. As you can see, a stack of seeds, not worth very much, a stack of wheat, not worth very much. So this is the method for if you're just getting started and you need a little bit of starting cash. I don't suggest doing it too much, even past, you know, your first couple levels in Skyblock, you know. Do this when you have to, maybe go up to about farming 14 as I said last video, but you're not going to need it much more than vet. Anyway, let's get on to the next method. Now this next method I actually talked about in my last video as well, but I am of course talking about it here, so if you did see it in the last video, you can skip this part, but for those who didn't see my last video, you are going to want to get a golden shovel with efficiency 2, or higher of course, but it needs to be at least efficiency 2, and you are going to want to go over to the farming islands, you're going to want to follow the path upwards, and then you are going to want to go over to the, once we get there, the desert settlement. Now once you are here, you will be able to take this golden shovel, and since it has at least efficiency too, it will be able to insta mine the sand, so once you get your rogue sword, and maybe some armor that gives you a bit of extra, of extra speed, you will be able to run around and just collect an absolute ton of sand, and this will of course level you up in mining an absolute ton as well, but you will be able to sell this sand for a lot more than you would be able to sell the wheat for, and you'll also be able to get a lot more sand than you would wheat just because of how fast you can do this, and you do not have to wait for it to replenish like you do with the wheat. My favorite method is to go in circles around this specific area, like this individual here is doing, and if you equip a mining pet of any sort, you can even level up taming by doing this because... Well, any pet you'll be able to level up taming, but if you have a mining pet, it will of course get extra XP because you are getting mining XP for it. Anyway, this method of course takes a little bit more prep, but I highly suggest it as soon as you can because it's going to be a lot more effective than wheat farming, and really just, it's a way better money making method all around because you will be able to turn it into enchanted sand, which is worth a solid amount, and you're going to be having an okay amount of money to start with if you do this. Anyway, let's get on to the next method. Anyway, the next money-making method we're going to talk about is going to take a bit more prep, it's going to take some leveling up, but this is actually my favorite money-making method in this entire game just because it works in the early game, the mid game, late game, and everything in between, it is of course bizarre flipping. Now, I am not going to talk too much about this because I have another guide that talks more about the process, and I am also going to talk more about the process of how to level up to 
uh, Skyblock level 7 so that you can unlock for Bizarre in a video very soon. Essentially, it's going to be something along the lines of how to speedrun your way to the Bazaar. So, definitely be looking out for that, but for now, let's just assume that you already have a Bazaar unlocked. I will be putting a link to my older money-making guide where I talk about Bazaar flipping more in depth up in the right, or I believe it should be the top right corner about now, so I definitely suggest watching that, and it'll tell you more about how everything works and a couple other early game money-making methods that I'm not going to talk about in this video, but in very simple terms, bizarre flipping is when you go, you look for an item, you see that under the buy price it says 2000 and that's how many people are buying. Or not how many people are buying it, but how much of the item people are buying. If I understand it correctly, I could be wrong. You know, take that with a grain of salt or whatever the saying is. But that is how I always understand it. So the higher the numbers are, the better, because that'll make it faster. The lower the numbers are, the slower people will buy it or sell it to you. So the next thing you're going to want to look at is, of course, the buy price and the sell price. The sell price, weirdly enough, is how much you will be buying these items for. So if I tried to buy them right now, it would cost me 311 essentially thousand dollars or coins. And if I tried to sell one, it would essentially do just under 500,000. So you want to look for items that you can buy that will sell and buy quickly and that have a good margin in there. So this has a very good margin of almost 200,000 coins. And it's for that big of a margin, not too expensive to buy. So enchanted red sand cubes right now would not be a horrible thing to try to flip just because of the margin and it's got an all right uh, amount of people buying it. But something like enchanted red sand or any of these other things would also be great just because, you know, they have a lot more people buying and selling them. So it'll be a lot easier for you to kind of get the hang of it with. Anyway, if this video is helping you at all, by the way, definitely make sure to subscribe because at 500 subscribers, I will be doing another giveaway on here. Probably about 10 million to 15 million coins by that point. I'm not 100% sure yet. That's just about an estimate for when I get to that point because it's still pretty far away. But every subscriber helps. So definitely make sure to hit that button for more Skyblock content that might help you along your way in this amazing game. Anyway, on to the next method. Now for this next method, you are going to want a bit of a fighting setup all ready on your character. You know, you're gonna want an okay armor set, you're gonna want an okay weapon. You don't need anything too special, but I'd suggest being able to deal about 1 to 2,000 damage, hopefully about 4,000 if you get a critical. You know, you want to be dealing okay damage for a starting, and you want to have okay health, defense, all that. This is, it's not 100% needed, of course, but it's uh, suggested. Anyway, we're going to be going to the Spider's Den, and this method is actually a very fun one. So, let's get started. Now, once we get to the Spider's Den, we're going to run along this path here, which I'm going to show you. There's the portal right there, so you're gonna run all the way along there. You're gonna come up here, and assuming that you have okay enough gear to survive, you're gonna wanna come down here, you know, hopefully kill anything that tries to fight you. It's not too strong as long as, as I said, you wanna be dealing about a thousand to a couple thousand damage for more of it better of course but you know it doesn't matter too much just hopefully you can survive that's the main thing now generally people will be spawning in a boss or essentially a mini boss called arachne in this area that i just led you to right now now as you can see it's actually an objective for me to summon arachne in but i don't have the stuff to do so right now however this is actually perfect timing, because this individual here would seem to be placing the necessary items. So, I'm going to show you exactly how this works in full detail, full depth. Someone is almost always spawning in in Arachne. Arachne is a 
relatively easy boss, more so mini boss as I said, and it is of course a spider. Now, as long as you get even one hit in on this thing, you will be able to get a share of the loot. Now, as I said this, or as I didn't say, um, that's kind of what you want, or why you want to make sure you can survive, just because the more damage, the better the loot, of course, and, you know, the better your gear is, the longer you can survive to deal more damage. So, you want to deal as much damage as possible, but as long as you get one hit in, you're at least solid with that. Then, if you do die, and if you do want to try running back in, you can just walk through the webs, it's not too big of a deal. I do suggest using your rogue sword first, though, just because it'll give you that extra speed boost. And then, you're going to want to try to just kill Arachne as fast as possible. It will keep spawning in those random spider minions, which we hate those, those are not kind. But, as long as eventually it dies, the loot will go to you, and generally you can make an alright amount of coins from this loot. And once you do finally kill Arachne, you will get Spider Essence and a bunch of other stuff right here, which generally you'll be able to make a very solid amount of money from. As you can see, Soul String, I got five of them and it's worth 25k. You can get Enchanted String, you can get one of these Arachne Fragments, which is worth about 26k roughly. I suggest checking in the... Uh, auction house before trying to sell it though, you know, see what the lowest bid is, try to undercut that, as you would with anything else, and you can sometimes even get Arachne's Calling, which is what you need to spawn in Arachne again. And people, once again, will generally be spawning these in like crazy, just one after the other after the other, trying to get all that loot, because it's relatively cheap to spawn in, and the loot can be pretty good. So. If you come to the Spider's Den 9 times out of 10 in my experience, you'll be able to find someone who's doing this, and you'll be able to just run in, get a couple hits in, and make some very easy loot. Sometimes you can even get a pet called a Tarantula from it, which will give you a couple of very interesting effects that I need to not be in combat to show you. Okay, there we go. It'll give you strength, crit chance, crit damage, it'll help you to not take as much damage from the venom that Arachne gives, and it will do a couple other things, so it's a def er, it's definitely a helpful pet to have if you're going to be fighting Arachne for money. Anyway, on to the next and final money-making method. I also forgot to mention, sometimes you can get this item called an Arachne's Fang, which is worth a ton of money when you're just starting out. As you can see, about 270k on the auction house, but to players in per- or not necessarily in person, but you know what I mean, in a trade, sometimes people will pay way more for them, so definitely be looking out for those. Anyway, once again, on to the next and final technique. Now this is where we're gonna have to go for the final method to make a bunch of coins in this video. So. This is actually also why I said this is going up to combat 15, because you actually need combat 15 to go into the end. But combat 15 is relatively easy to get to. I will actually leave a link to my video about how to get a bunch of combat experience as well up in the corner, so definitely look out for that and check that out as well, because it can help tremendously, and all the points in it should still be valid, even with the updates. So anyway. What we're going to be doing in the end is a very simple but very grindy technique. Basically, this method as, is as simple as getting a pickaxe that is, you know, quick, can break obsidian, so at least a diamond pickaxe, I suggest. And basically, you are going to run around the end. You can use whatever armor, you know, if you get Ender armor, you can use that because it'll give you extra stats while you're in the end, so you might as well. But any armor should work because as long as you don't fight the Endermen, they're not going to fight you generally. But what you're going to do is you're going to take your pickaxe and you're going to look for blocks that look like this with a bunch of v pink and purple particles all over them. These are called Ender nodes. Now, these can give you 
a variety of different items, but the main ones we're looking for generally are Enchanted Obsidian, which sells for a solid amount, Grand Experience Bottles, you can get one, two, I think I've even gotten up to 16 once at a time, which is ac absolutely insane, because these are about 5k each, so if you get two even, as you can see, that's 11,000 coins for breaking a block. So you're going to continue running around, and sometimes you'll see normal endstone as a node as well, but sometimes you'll get enchanted endstone, sometimes you'll get ender pearls, whatever else. So it's kind of, you know, it's a very chance-based thing, but as long as you run around and just kind of keep doing it, eventually you're going to get some of the more valuable items. One time I even got an item called a Titanic Experience Bottle, which gave, or was worth about 200 to 300,000 coins. So I definitely suggest looking out for one of those. Now, here's where the danger of this technique actually comes in, is these Endermites that can spawn. Now, these things will hunt you like crazy for some reason. And since they're so small, I generally don't even try to fight them just because they hit hard and they're hard to hit which is a very bad combo, but as long as they don't spawn, or as long as you run when they do spawn, you will be entirely safe, just like that. Because they are, of course, relatively slow. If you have a rogue sword and something that ups your speed, you're going to be perfectly fine. No issues at all, just run when they spawn. Because, once again, relatively high health, rel relatively hard to hit, so there's just and they don't really give you much for fighting them, other than bestiary and combat XP and all that. Now, if you do have to fight an Enderman, well, you're fighting an Enderman, so just, you know, don't die. Try to have an enchant called Ender Slayer on your sword, but once again, as long as you don't fight them or look at them like usual, they're going to be your best friend. But your real best friend here, once again, is going to be your pickaxe. So just keep on looking around and you will be set for money I cannot give an exact, or not exact, but a rough estimate on how much money this could make, but it could definitely make an alright amount of money. This Ender Gauntlet I just got here is worth 10k if I sell it to an NPC, or if I trade it in, or, um, what's the exact term, if I go down here, if I sacrifice it, then I can get various different things that I can trade in here, and not there, there, and I can get Dragon Essence and all that, and do a bunch of fun stuff with that. Now, for those of you that are still watching, I have a little treat for you, because I know I've been saying there's only five money-making techniques, and there are in this video, but there's also, let's just say, a honorable mention for those of you that made it this far. Now, this final mention is not actually from me, but I actually asked my guild members in Skyblock what they think the best money-making method in the very beginning is, and many of them agreed. It is to start with the garden update, and if you are willing to grind a bunch of work and effort into this, you can make about 200 to 400,000, depending on your setup an hour in just basically making a melon, pumpkin, or carrot farm in the garden update or garden part of Skyblock. So I definitely suggest that if that is your kind of thing, but personally I'm not a big fan of garden things so that's why I'm not showing it if that makes sense. But once again it can make tremendous money as long as you put in the effort. And it's of course very simple effort, you just, you know, make a farm. So, definitely suggest that once again. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching, especially if you made it to this point. Definitely make sure to subscribe as I said, because hopefully we can reach that 500 subscribers as soon as possible and get that giveaway going. And definitely make sure to leave a like and comment any other ideas you may have for guides. Thank you again for watching, till next time everyone. And goodbye.